Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. Today we will start yet another video series, covering W25Q series nor flash memory from Winbond. I could make a single video showing a library, and it's working, but I prefer doing it this way, where I explain how to write functions using the data from the datasheet. We will read the info from the datasheet, and write different functions to read, write, update, and erase the memory. In today's video, we will see the connections, the cube MX setup, and we will write a simple function to read the ID of the device. For this video series, I am going to use the STM32F407ZET6MCU board, as it has the flash already soldered into it. It is a W25Q16, which is 16 megabits in size. Here is how the connection is made to the flash. The CS pin is connected to the FCS. The data out is connected to the MISO, data in is connected to the MOSI, and the clock is connected to the clock pin. Actually I have one more module, which is 32 megabits in size, and I am going to connect it to the same pin. We know how we can connect multiple devices to the same SBI lines, and each can be selected by using the different chip select pin. Here I have used the F103 just for the reference, but if you have the F103, this is how the connection would be. The chip select pin of the first module is connected to the PB14, and the second module to the pin PB6. Other than that, both modules are connected to the same SBI lines. Here is the datasheet for the Winbond, W25Q16, the one which is soldered on the board. A convenient thing about these modules is that at the base level they all work similarly. They just differ in the size, and that doesn't change how the memory is distributed at the lower level. You will understand this in a while. Here you can see the module can support the dual, or quad SBI also. As I mentioned, we will be using the standard SBI, so we have four pins, clock, chip select, data in, and data out. Here is a little detail about the memory. This 16 megabits variant has the memory distributed among the 8192 pages, with each page being 256 bytes in size. We can program 256 bytes at once. This is something which remains common throughout the variants. Whatever module you choose, the page size will be 256 bytes, but the number of pages will vary depending on how much memory the module has. We can't erase a single page, but a group of 16 pages, which is called a sector, and is 4 kilobytes in size. We can also erase a block, which is a group of 128 pages, or 256 pages. Or an entire chip can be erased at once. We will cover everything in this series as we go along with it. Let's look at the block diagram of the memory. Here we have one block, which has 16 sectors. Each sector is 4 kilobytes in size, and contains 16 pages. This block distribution remains the same across the different variants of the Winbond flash memories. But the number of blocks will change depending on the size of your flash memory. For the W25Q16, we have 32 blocks in total. I also have the datasheet for another module I am using for today's demonstration, that is W25Q32. It's 32 megabits in size, but as you can see, the only change here is the number of pages, which is twice the number of 16 megabit module. The memory distribution is also similar. We have the 16 sectors in one block, and each sector is 4 kilobytes in size. The change is in the number of blocks, which is 64, twice the number of blocks in the 16-bit module. So we can write common functions for all these devices, just setting the higher limits for different modules. You can get more info about the module from the Winbond website. Here you can see the different modules available. 
the number of blocks just gets doubled for the higher variant. There are different products available for each memory size, but the most common ones are the JV series. For the rest of the changes, you can check the model number on your IC, and then download the respective datasheet from here. As I mentioned, we will be reading the device ID in today's tutorial. The ID is unique to each product series. You can check the ID of the device under the instructions section. For the 16 megabits series, the ID is 4015 hex. We can check the same for the 32 megabits series. Here it is 4016 hex. The manufacturer ID, EF hex, remains the same across all the Winbond flash memories. We will understand the ID in detail while we read it later in the video. Let's start the cube ID, and create a new project. I am using STM32F407ZET6MCU. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let's set the clock first. I am enabling the external crystal for the clock. The board has 8 MHz crystal, and we will run the system at the maximum 168 MHz. Enable the serial wire debug, and let's set the SysTick for the time base. Alright, now we will enable the SBI1 in the full duplex master mode. The data size must be 8 bits, as we read or write the data in bytes. The data should be transferred as MSB first. Let's set the prescaler such that the board rate is around 2.5 megabits per second. Let's see the clock conditions in the datasheet. Here it is mentioned that the SPI mode must be either mode 0, or mode 3. In both of these modes, the data is sampled on the rising edge and shifted out on the falling edge of the clock. The clock polarity is the only difference between mode 0, and mode 3, but since both are acceptable, the clock polarity does not matter. So we will keep the clock polarity low. The clock phase is set to one edge, which means the data will be sampled on the first clock edge, that is, the rising edge. This is what we need, so we will keep it default. The SPI pins configured by default are the pins PA5, 6, and 7. But as per the schematics of the board, the flash is connected to the pins PB3, 4, and 5. Also the chip select is connected to the pin PB14. So let's reassign the SPI pins to PB3, 4, and 5. And now we will set the pin PB14 as output, so as to use the chip select. I am using another flash on the same SPI lines, so let's configure one more pin as output, so to be used as the chip select for the second module. Go to the GPIO configuration, and set the initial state for these pins high. We pull the pin low to enable the respective module, that is why we are keeping the high initially. Let's set their speed to highest, as we might need to switch the states at high rates. That is all the configuration we need, generate the code now. We will create new library files for this project, and we will keep adding things to it in the future videos. Create a header file also. Let's start with the source file. Include the main file, and the header file we just created. Copy the SPI definition from the main file, and define it here as an extern variable. To keep things simple, I am defining the SPI1 as the W25Q SPI. We need to frequently pull the chip select pin high and low, so let's define them as functions. 
The PV14 is the chip select for the module on this board. Let's define the number of blocks available for the 16 megabits memory I am using. Let's check the datasheet to understand about the IDs, and how to read them. Here is the instruction to read the ID, 9F hex. We will also reset the memory, so let's check the reset command first. The reset command terminates any ongoing operation. The device returns to its default power on state, and any volatile content on the device is lost. The reset command is made up of two instructions. This is to make sure that the reset is not issued accidentally. We have to send the instruction to enable the reset, and then send the reset instruction itself. Each instruction is 8 bits in size, so we have to send 2 bytes for reset. The reset's time is 30 microseconds. Let's write the function to reset the device. Define a buffer to store the instructions. First we will store the enable reset command, and then store the reset command in the buffer. Now select the device by pulling the chip select low. Send the data using the function SBI transmit. The SBI handler is W25QSBI, which we defined above, data is T data buffer, 2 bytes of data, and let's set the timeout to 1 second. Once the data is transferred, unselect the device by pulling the chip select high. That is it, the function to reset the device is ready. Now we will write another function to read the device ID. Here we have the instructions to read ID. There are different IDs available, like manufacturer ID, the device ID, and the JE DEC ID. The JE DEC ID is more unique to a particular device, so we will read it. It can be read by issuing the instruction 9F hex. The JE DEC ID is made of manufacturer ID, and the two device IDs, the memory type, and the capacity. So the JE DEC ID is 3 bytes long, the higher byte is manufacturer ID, then the next byte is memory type, and the least significant byte is the capacity. While reading the JE DEC ID for this device, we are expecting the manufacturer ID, EF hex, memory type 40 hex, and capacity 15 hex. Alright let's write the function to read ID. Define a variable to send the instruction 9F hex. The device will output 3 bytes of data, so define an array to store them. Now pull the CS low to select the device. Send the instruction. This is a single variable, so we need to send the address. Now receive the 3 bytes of data, and store in the array we defined. Pull the CS high to unselect the device. We will combine the three data bytes and make a single ID out of them. The manufacturer ID is the MSB, then we have the memory type in the middle, and the capacity in the LSB. So we will shift the data received first by 16 places, the second byte by 8 places, and add them to the third byte. We have made a 24-bit ID now. We need to define these functions in the header file, so that we can call them in the main file. Now go to the main file, and include the W25Q header file. Define a 32-bit variable to store the ID of the device. Now call the W25Q reset function to reset the device. Let's add some delay in the reset function, so the device settles down properly after the reset. Call the function to read the ID, and store it in the ID variable we just defined. That is it, let's build and debug the code. 
I am adding the variable id to the live expression. Let's run the code now. We have received some data in the id variable. Let me change the number format to hexadecimal. You can see the id received in hex is ef4015. This is exactly the same id we were expecting. The manufacturer id ef hex, and the memory type and capacity, 4015 hex. So we received the id for the 16 megabit device successfully. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have connected one more device on the same bus, but the chip select for that device is connected to the pin 36. So let's update the chip select pin here. Build and debug the code again. This time the ID is EF4016 hex. This is as per the information in the 32 megabits memory device. So the code is working fine so far. We were able to reset the device hopefully, and we read the ID of both the devices. We will continue in the next video, where we will see how to read the data from the device. This is it for the video. I hope you understood the basic functions, and the connection shown in the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.